Randy's criticism of me was so harsh that I, it actually made me feel better about the whole process because I was like, oh, I probably wasn't going to go through here in the first place because he's like, that was terrible, dog, or whatever. And I was like, it wasn't terrible. Like, I sang in key and stuff. <laughs> like... That'll warm us up. That's fine too. Hey everyone, welcome to I'm Trying. Don't you hear that vibrato in my voice? The Mm -hmm. podcast where dreams go to die, but then we resurrect them. Mm -hmm. And it comes out sounding like a beautiful song that you know and love. Mm -hmm. I'm your beautiful song writer. (laughs) Janelle Dennis. That made no sense. And I'm Jacob Derwin. Uh, I guess I'm the song then. Welcome to oh. episode nine. We're so happy you're here. This is a... Uh... That was so poetic. I'm the songwriter and you're the song? I thought that's what you were going to go for. I thought you were going to say song and then you you added the writer on. I'm like, well, I, I guess I'm the song. Then you had to... Yeah. I served it up. What, a, what an odd choice of song to write. Me. <laughs> uh... That's the narcissist warm up. Oh, gosh. Me, 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 me. Oh, yeah, you're right. You are correct. Uh, yeah, welcome. We're so happy you're here. This is, uh, uh, let's, let's just pull behind the back of the curtain. This is the fifth time we're uh, trying to record this intro, because we are sleepy babies. Always pulling back the curtain. hmm I would like the curtain closed, please. Nah, man. We're showing it off. You're seeing all the ropes, the ladders, the metalwork, the, the piping, the tubes. I just want to show out in my Neil Diamond outfit and sunglasses and just let that be that and have there be the mystery. What? There's no pulling back the What was any of that? Me. I think Neil, Neil Diamond? Yes. Is that a Josh Cohen reference? Yes, it is. Okay. I went to go see the play <laughs> recently. <laughs> so, <laughs> real life is better. Neil life is better, better than real, than real life. life. It's true. Shout out to Josh Cohen. Shout out to John Finley. Shout out to... All the people involved with yeah. that. Very, very sweet. If show. you want to see it, uh, you're bad. out of luck. <laughs> it was closed yesterday. It was closing night. It got a good review from Sondheim, though, which is pretty cool. It's an amazing play. And yeah. when they said Seinfeld meets... Um, I forget what the tagline is. <laughs> Seinfeld meets, meets Roger Seinfeld. And <laughs> so, so, you, you like Seinfeld? Well, what if we told you that it's like Seinfeld, but... Also more With Seinfeld. more Seinfeld? I'd go crazy for a tag like that. I'd be like, whoa! I don't know if Seinfeld would like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, Exc- excuse me? Yeah. Excuse-, excuse me! Yeah. I can't do a Seinfeld impression. That was pretty close. It was pretty close? I'll take, I'll take pretty close. Um, on today's episode is the wonderful, talented musician Eric Vitoff. Um, Eric, uh, we went to his apartment to record with him on site, in studio. On site. We caught him on site. Yeah, man. It, it was, was originally, a f- I showed up to, to fight him physically, mm-hmm. and then he played a song, and, you know. You were just entranced. Yeah, that's were, the power of music. Yeah. He's a wonderful songwriter, and uh, today's episode is a lot of fun. We, Me and Eric share something, which is we both um, auditioned for reality shows, except his was American Idol. And uh, ooh, 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 ooh. The, you know that one, and yeah. uh, he had a very interesting, unique experience regarding Idol, uh, and uh, I, I'm excited for him to tell that story. It's a very weird little story, and uh, um, and I'm, 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 I'm personally I'm happy that he he didn't necessarily become the world's next big superstar because we still get to enjoy him here on the ground floor. That's pretty selfish. <laughs> 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 Maybe it's a little bit. I think he's a yeah. great songwriter, and he'll make it there on, on his own. Uh, and uh, it was really cool. And the song, this uh, pardon me, this episode features uh, two performances. So if you listen to the episode, you're going to hear uh, two songs, two Eric Vitoff originals. One from his recent album, Tangible Divide, which is available wherever you listen to music. I do recommend it. It is wonderful. Support an artist mm-hmm. who is uh, who's making it on his own. And uh, the other one was a brand new song. Which was really special. So uh, I'm excited for you guys to hear it. Beautiful voice. But uh, aren't you ever... Don't you ever listen to people that are great singers and then you hate your own voice? Oh, And you're like, I should never open my mouth to let melodies come out ever again. (laughs) Escape my throat. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand that. My voice is hit or miss with a lot of people so like I, i'll hear what do you mean hit or miss hit or miss like i'll go to a, like, like I'll, I'll sing and like some people 
will like hear what I'm saying and the like the tone of my voice or the like the way that I present songs and other people are like he's not that great a singer. I didn't enjoy listening to that. So, Where are you hearing this? Someone said it to your face? Well, no, like I have friends who like I'll send a song that I wrote to them and be like, "What do you think of this song?" and they'll say, "Well, I like the guitar part." Oh, and, that's that's a friend you need to keep though. Well, I, it's it's, not, well, it's fine. Like at least they're not trying to be like, "Oh yeah, I loved it." And they don't love yeah. it. Well, I'd rather the No, honesty. no, no, no. I'm not saying you need to lie to me, but like most of my songs aren't exactly complicated guitar songs. They're more about mm. the lyrics and the and the the story. So, if you're telling me you're mainly focused on the guitar, that means you heard like five chords and were like, "Well, that's the highlight." You know, so oh. it's you know, my voice doesn't work for everyone, and that's fine. That's okay. Um, but uh, you know, that's, it works for a lot of people. That's very sweet. It's, it's, it's hard to sing, man. I, I'm i trying. Yeah, trying so hard. Even we went to karaoke last night. Tell and, me about karaoke. What did you sing? I, oh, I didn't get to put a song in. Because, you didn't sing? No, because they closed early. I know, but I thought you were there for a little while. <laughs> we were. Um, I, I was, that's the thing, that, that's the insecurity. When you can't sing and you're around singers, mm-hmm. uh, it's, I don't know, I get, we, not weirded out, but I'm just like, I'm just going to sit back and I don't want it. I don't want you to think that I think that I'm a good singer. So you don't, you don't want people to think that you think that you're a good, hold on. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I kind of understand that. Like, I don't want people to think like that I'm being cocky or anything by going up and taking, I totally get that. Yeah. I, but like also karaoke bars are just about yeah. like, the performance. It's not about the health. That's the true. Voices, and so. that's my, that's my, I love, you know, going all out at karaoke bars, but it's at karaoke, you have to be. You can either be like real, really bad, but with a lot of flair, a lot of heart, or one of those people that everyone's like, "Whoa!" And I'm like, right like in the my middle. roommate Wolf, yeah, <laughs> who's got the voice of an yeah, angel. Yeah, and that's yeah. who we went to karaoke with. Yep, that's it's hard to follow that. I get that. And so, like, that's the thing. I'm yeah. like, I don't, I hate, I don't like undeserved hype. Mm-hmm. So even so, my best friend was there, and she's like, Janelle's such a great singer. She's a beautiful singer. I'm like. Oh no, because then now when I'm when I sing, yeah. it's going there's going to be that in the back of An whoever's there, yeah, mm. and then it's going to be so trash. Yeah. And I'm, they're like, what are you talking about? No, I totally get that. A lot of people who really like the way I like people who like my songs or the way I perform mm. will sometimes say, "Oh, he's a great singer," okay, which is a misnomer because I'm a good singer. I'm a good. I'm a better songwriter. I'm a uh, good singer, but when someone says, "Oh, he's a great singer," and then they go over here to hear me <laughs> sing, like, I'm not great. Like I'm, I mean, I'm singing. I'm in tune. I'm fine. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I'm not like I don't have any like real flair to the way I sing. So like it's mm-hmm. kind of a misnomer. The phrase "singer" in general, you know, it's a toughie. Unlike yeah. Eric Vitoff, who is a great singer. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and so shit. I mean, yeah, and it was really special being in the room to hear him play. We should have had a sing off with him. That actually came up at karaoke because uh, Oasis. They started. Someone ah, put in Wonderwall. Don't know. Oh, don't look back in anger. You. Yeah. All right, good. Much better. Don't look back in anger. Much better. And I'll see me and friend of the show Wolf. We're like, oh my god, don't look back in anger. This is an amazing song. We didn't even put it in. <laughs> uh, and then somehow, like, thank God it's not Wonderwall. But here's the power of Wonderwall. I mean, thank God it's not Wonderwall. And then for the next 15 minutes, we talked about Wonderwall. <laughs> And I'm like, oh no, this is exactly what I didn't want. Like, I'm the, I'm the, mm. I'm the that version of the guy at a party that mm-hmm. brings out his guitar and starts play playing. Yeah. Except it's me, like, me, like, oh, everyone, there's so many, so many other better song, Oasis songs than Wonderwall. There's like three of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the brothers would disagree because they disagree about everything. Yes, they do. The, so there's a part of Wonderwall which is why oh we're going for it I okay like sure it. okay and the part of Wonderwall which yeah. is why I like it mm-hmm. and it's the part everyone everyone knows the song yeah. I don't want to go for it trigger any Hit feelings me. Some I don't want to trigger any bad campfire memories okay. for anyone bad campfire but there's a part that <laughs> there's a part that I don't believe that anybody feels, feels the, way the way I do, I do about, you now, yeah. about you know. but what does it sound like about you now Janelle do you not hear that Every single time I hear and that, I can't understand. You're about people thinking you have ego. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Will you tell me you didn't hear it though? I, I mean, when you say it like that, 
no, you never in my past. I, I guess you're my first Janelle, so I guess I maybe guess I so. haven't heard that before. Because even I said that to Wolf, and then I'm like, I don't think anybody feels the way I do. I'm About like, oh, but I, I, I let it up. I didn't have the same reveal. I'm like, it sounds like my name, and then we started sing, singing yeah. it, and he's like, oh, About Janelle, oh my god. <laughs> I'm... It's about me, you guys. I, I we need to uh, now. The, now the curtains really drawn back. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoy our episode with the wonderful Eric Vitoff. Stay tuned for the whole episode to hear both songs and uh, go listen to Tangible Divide on Spotify and all the other streaming platforms when the episode is over. All right, here we go. Yeah. whatever reason you decided to try and be on America <laughs> how does this happen I mean for whatever reason I can answer that quite clearly and the answer is super stardom yeah super stardom I mean I guess that was the idea at the time yes it's, you were an, you were aspiring to be the next big musical superstar yeah yeah I um let's see so this is 2012 uh I've been playing guitar for like 15 years now so as of like 2019 now 15 years yeah. uh yeah since I was about like 15 years old um and I've been singing and stuff for, for all that time, and I really only got serious about writing my own music probably about five years ago, sure. and so this American Idol story is from about seven years ago. So you were still doing covers? Still doing covers, yeah, and, and, and you know, like, I'll still play shows now where I'm doing, like, half, originals, half covers, but my kind yeah. of musical focus now is on the creative side of things and writing for new sure. songs and trying to make cool new stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, 2012, um... So let's see. So American Idol, um, the round that you see on TV when people are in front of the judges, mm -hmm. that is the fourth round. Ooh. Okay? Yeah. Whoa. So the first yeah. round is the cattle call audition where you'll see some footage of that in the beginning of American Idol episodes where they show like it's a whole stadium people, right? and everybody yeah. there. Yeah. So the way that works is that on the floor of the arena, they'll have like... 20 tables set up and there's an entire arena filled with people and then you're in groups by you know section of the of, of the arena and, and they call you down and you go up in front of um producers who are who are at these tables in groups of four and yeah. you get to sing like 30 seconds of a song and they either tell you hey thanks but no thanks or you get the famed golden ticket Sure. These are production assistants. They're producers. Okay. They they are there there there's there are they're kind of producers of which there are many. Mm -hmm. Then there's executive producer. Actually, here, sorry. Let me go back to the rounds. Okay, yeah. First round is a cattle call edition. Yeah. Second round, which is in a different. Okay, hold well, hold on. <laughs> round one is in one place and at one time. Yeah. And then rounds two, three, and four all take place on the same weekend in a different place. Oh, okay. So in, in my case, the cattle call audition was at PNC Bank Arts Center in New Jersey. Yeah. And then uh, producer round, executive producer round, and um, ju uh, celebrity judges, judges for, which is round, round, round four, was all one weekend at Lincoln Center. Um, a few, Lincoln Center? Yeah, like a month or two later or something. I didn't realize it was that long apart. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. And, and and the way that they shoot it um, for, the, for the TV show is they... Make it look like, wow, well, everybody here showing up at the stadium, and oh, they go right up in front of the celebrity judges. Like, mm -hmm. and if I remember, if it's been a little while, it's been a little while, but I think they're out of like, you know, maybe like 6,000 people or so that come to the initial cattle call. I think that like, maybe like four or 500 make it to the second round, and then that gets cut in almost half for the yeah. next, and then it ends up with like 100 or 150 people in, in front of the celebrity judges. But of sure. course, to the to the viewers, it, it, it looks like it's everybody, everybody going in front of Nicki Minaj, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah, so in my case, did the cat... Okay, right, so, here, so here's how it works, right? Okay. So the cattle call, so the cattle call auditions, yeah. they give you a golden ticket if you get through to the next round. And on the top of that p yellow piece of paper, there's either a... It was a, a Y... A G or an N. A Y means, wow, this person is like good at the Legit. level, like they could win. Yeah. Very rare. A G was this person's good enough to kind of get through and they're, and they're you know, and they're, and, 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 and yeah, yeah, they're worth it to kind of give them a look. Sure. And the N okay. is the people that you see in front of the celebrity judges who oh. are uh, on the more humorous kind of performance. Entertaining. End of, end of things, Entertaining, yes. is that literally? And, yeah. and, 
Yeah. So oh, so so I got through. I I, I got myself a G. I, G I, I got myself through to the to the to the to the Lincoln Center round. Um, I went in front of the producers. I got through that round, yeah. and then I went in front of the executive producers. Of which, so right. So for the executive producers, it's three of them sitting in the celebrity judge seats, uh-huh. and you need two of two of them out of three to get through. Who are your execs? Do you remember? Um, that? N- Nigel something or other. Okay. Th- their, their names are on the beginning of yeah. the show. That, did you have Mark Burnett? Oh, Nigel. The... I don't know. I don't think okay. I have Mark Burnett. I was going to say, we, we might have had a similar experience, because when I was auditioning for Survivor, I had to st- sit and stand in front of a bunch of producers and execs yeah. and plead my case to be on the show. And right. one of them... I know there's some similar producers within those two shows. Sure, sure. I wouldn't be surprised if we had to go up against the they same were, people. They were yeah. fancy and British and impressive. Yep. Yeah, and and Nigel's the one that's the judge on the UK. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah. So one of them liked me. One of them was like, no. And the other one was on the fence. And they kind of went uh, back and forth with the, the executive producer round, and eventually uh, they gave me the sorry, thanks, but no thanks. And really? I, yeah, 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 yeah. And I had a guitar and I sang, and yeah, I think yeah. it was like five straight years of white guy with guitar winning. Oh yeah. And by the way, just <laughs> being a white guy that plays acoustic, I, I like to joke about this at my shows. Yeah, yeah. My, my specialty is timing, you know. <laughs> white guy, white white male in 2019 with an acoustic guitar, like I, right yeah. on time. Yeah, we've had enough Ford commercials. <laughs> Right there with you, man. Right there with you. Yeah. So, um, so, they, so they gave me the no. I was all sad. I went home. Wow. There was one producer who, who I was kind of in touch with. Her name was Cat. Her 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 number still in my still in my phone. And so I went home and I was calling my family and telling them how it went and kind of being oh sad. And yeah. Cat from American Idol calls me and she goes. Producers changed their mind. They want you to come back they tomorrow. They changed their mind. They, they want you to come back tomorrow for the celebrity audition. I freaked out. I ran and ran around the yard. I was all, I was all, I was all, I was all excited. Um, awesome. Yeah. So the next day, I went back, and they, when you're in front of celebrity judges, they do the whole shebang with you with um, um, doing the kind of like B-roll stuff of oh, you're walking up out of the subway with your guitar and yeah, America, yeah, play guitar, yeah. play, play music <laughs> and everything. Oh, back in the cover days, this was good. good. <laughs> Good times, good times. Um, oh god! Yeah, so I uh, Seacrest is like the nicest guy in the freaking world. That was what I wanted. To he ask is the so sweetest so sweetheart. He remembered my you, name. I talked talk to my parents and everything. That's right. And, and uh, he's meeting so many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there with my girlfriend at the time. Another ex, uh, uh, my mom and my dad, wow. and yeah, yeah. And they sat there with Seacrest while I was in there, and so, so yeah. Um, so I went in there. I my main song I did was "Change the World" by Eric Clapton. Did that in Mams Acapella. Nice. When I was, nice. Was probably probably around the same time. Mams is Merrick Avenue up. Middle School to yeah. all the to all uh, the. Anyone who wants, I, I'll probably mention this in the intro, but in case I don't, like me and Eric went to the same schools. We lived, grew up on the same block. We grew up on the same street. Uh, Pretty amazing. Yeah. So you know his whole family. Yeah, man. He, my dad was your youth advisor. Mother was my Hebrew school, school teacher, teacher, and yep. dad was the youth group advisor. We is go, there mm-hmm. any surprise that I work in a synagogue now? I don't really think there is. Uh, so there you go. So no. there's that context no, for why we might use acronyms that make no sense. sense to anybody. Else. That's why I'm a fisherman. That's why you're a fisherman. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I guess. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. So, 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 yeah. So I, I go in front of them. My judges are Mariah. So from left, okay. to, from left to right, Mariah Carey, Mariah, Keith Urban, oh. okay. Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 All right. Mariah Carey. Oh, my God. Keith, Keith Urban. Uh, uh. Uh, Mariah Carey, Keith Urban, Nicki Minaj, and Randy Jackson. Mr. Randy. Oh, and God. So no Simon. Randy. No Simon. No Simon. Famously. Thank, okay. thank God. This is actually Simon left, right? <laughs> I feel like I would have like quit music afterwards. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so I do change the world in front of them. And I play like a verse and a chorus of it, and they're like, "Thank you, thank you." You know. So and what do they say to you before you just walk up and start singing, or do they the, introduce themselves? It is pretty surreal when you walk up in there, just like the bright lights and the studio aspect, and the, the thing that really sticks out to me so much the most. Which, hold on, by the way, Lincoln Center overlooking Central Park, it's, like a really picturesque, yeah. nice, beautiful scene. The thing I remember the most is those Coke cups of theirs that sit in front. They they are like they are like cho- yeah, choreographically placed. Oh, yeah. Just still, just the sot the these massive Coke cups all turned perfectly specifically for the, the for the cameras to see yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, and and, four, and and so four of them, right? So when there's four judges, you only have to get two to get through. You only need two. You yeah. only need two of the four to get oh. through. I play my song. Mariah Carey goes. 
that was awesome. She's like, you're cute. I want to have a, I want to like go to the park and like have a. Mariah bar. said that to you. She has a permanent place lodged in my heart. She goes, oh, she, she goes, she goes, she goes. You're cute. I want to like go to the park and like have a bottle of wine with you or something. And wow. I was like, oh. And Keith Urban, what he said was, oh, man, I, I don't know. I just, I just feel like I don't. Really, uh, I feel like I don't really see the star power there, mate. You know, he's just kind of, you know, like he was. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, and then uh, oh. Nicki Minaj only spoke in a British accent for no reason. The, yep. the entire see, time. See, that's, <laughs> Rome, that's your alter ego. That's Roman yeah. or whoever. Uh, yeah. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's how she started her career. She rapped in different voices, and she rapped in a British accent as well. Rapping, uh, talking, whatever. We've already, we've already dissed a couple rappers. Nikki, Nikki gave me a kind of eh, so-so, and Randy kind of gave me an eh, so-so. They let me do two more songs. I then did... Three songs? I then did... Yeah, on on guitar too. I did this love. And was anyone intimidating? Like, was Nikki intimidating? Or Randy, so Randy. Already. See, so here, so so yeah. I did, I did this love. I see. I, I forget exactly what the order of playing the songs and what their feedback and, and everything sure. was. What I know for sure is that Mariah Carey liked me so much that she was looking at the other ones confused, going, "What? What is there not? You guys really, really?" And oh god, and that's her. the only person whose opinion counts. I every t- right. every time, really. every time, and, and I think she's from Long Island. Like, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and she just, she will always, anytime I see her on TV, no matter what she's in yeah. trouble for, stupid things she said or anything, permanent place in my, wow. in my, in my heart. That's wonderful. So, um, so yeah, so I played This Love, and then I played Super Bass by Nicki Minaj. Oh, I did it, Nicki Minaj. Smart. She's got to give me that look, got to give me that look, and the band's got my knob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's kind of risky. Come Were you a man. fan of that song before, or did totally. you compare that to- uh, knowing yeah. Nicki was going to be both, in Both, both, all, yeah. all, oh. all the above. Yeah, just a kind of, you know, that that's a very, she's a very fast-talking kind of rapper, and I can, you know, yeah. How, how, did, how did that song? The heartbeat coming. I don't want to get sued, but uh, <laughs> we don't have the right to do it. Just one for the boys of the Boomer system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Boomer system. 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 No, I'm All I can remember is I can't. I have of no use. You know, you know, he might go to know. He popped bottles and he got the right kind of belt. No, yeah. The other one, oh, or did no? I did that and not the Trey songs one. The Trey, I was like, oh, Trey, do you think you could buy me a bottle of rosé? All right, let's get on that. I'm with the band. He with his friends. I don't say I say keys to the bands. Keys to the bands. Okay, cool. So, so she would have been very helpful right now. Nikki, Nikki gives me a British accent, so so. Randy initially gives me kind of a so so, and then I played. I forget what. Wait, which one. so when you performed Nicki Minaj's song to her face, she looked at you and went. She was she she gave All me right. a, she gave me a nod of like that's not bad that's not bad but like what what I like to see what, you what, what her and Keith said was like I don't really see the star power there I don't really see the kind yeah. of like the you know the, the star power oomph. They saw a guy that takes out his guitar at parties and really entertains people. Yeah, right. That's exactly. The point of the white guy with the guitar. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. The, and and Randy see. I almost Randy's criticism of me was so harsh that oh. I it actually made me feel better about the whole process because I was like, oh, I probably wasn't gonna go through here in the first place because he's like, that was terrible, dog or whatever, and I was like, it wasn't Ooh. terrible. Like I sang in key <laughs> and stuff. Like, like it was objectively <laughs> mediocre. Was like, at, 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 at worst, terrible. and I could, oh. but but I could kind of kind of tell, and and uh, yeah, that was that was that was that was that was pretty much it. Mar- Mariah Carey liked me, was confused, and was fighting on my behalf. Wow. Keith Urban. Um, and we I mean, know yeah. Nikki's going to say no if Mariah says yes, because they had their whole... Their whole little beef. Yeah. There was beef there? Oh, il, yeah. They hated il, each other. Il y a de beef. I mean, oh. <laughs> really? I mean, to be fair, like, Mariah's, like, out of all those people, you know, a legitimate singer, and uh, Nikki... Uh, is it? So maybe that's part of that? I don't know. Talented, talented rapper. Well, they, that's they, like she's they, a talented rapper. Like yeah. But has there, has, there, has there been a rapper on American Idol? Has there been like a rapper? Mm, Interesting. No, I don't think they're looking just, for that. I just... Probably not. I don't know. I, then again, I, I've never been a, a super in love with Idol. So, okay, right. so the, all this goes down. You play three... Do you know they, that's normal? For three, they, let, they let me play... I, I, I think they... They were cool about it. Yeah. Yeah, they... they there, you know something. In in retrospect, what you gotta do on that show, especially yeah. in that round, is not something that's like crazy, crazy outlandish or whatever, but just something that's a little bit enough off the beaten path. That yeah. And so I never even my my audition didn't make it onto TV. I was in a, was a one point five seconds of a commercial. 
My my grand my the, the, I thought you were the in a scene. montage. I thought you yeah. were like, the one that made the air. I thought you were like in a montage. That yeah. Like a, which was it, did they show you playing super bass? The montage that? was long. My part was one point five seconds. That's what I'm. Okay. And there was no sound. Oh, there was no man. sound. No, no. It was just you know just a kind of a clip and ah, there I am strumming away. I was wearing a white you know kind of loose chill you know white button down kind of thing. You should have had Coca Cola on the shirt. That is, I should, it's like literally spilled Co- like literally yeah. spilled soda on my shirt. <laughs> I don't see how that would have helped. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> so that were you disappointed with that? When it, that was all it was, or were you okay with the fact that, like, oh, I'm not going to get dissed by Randy Jackson? I'm Literally, the fact that Randy's criticism was so kind of like, huh, like over the top, like, man, that was terrible. Like, yeah. like, what do you even do it? Like, all, all, all that, that, that kind of made me go, like, okay, cool. And it was a little dis. I mean, I was still kind of oh. So I was still just kind of thrilled because they called me back the last day, right? So, yeah. so that was cool. I got to meet Seacrest. He asked me a bunch of questions and stuff. That 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 part was cool. Yeah. So let me tell you. Let's go back to the people with the yellow paper and the letter Please. N. Let's oh, God. Let, let's 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 go let's go back to that for a second. Please. The kid who went after me was a was a was a very nice Korean American kid, and his parents were there too. And um, he was one of these kids that had the N, and he was wearing kind of like a like a one piece white sleeve cut off jumpsuit and like gloves and he was kind of getting a lot of attention from the cameras and he was like this and that and there were other people who were there in the same kind of green room holding waiting area where they got cameras everywhere just kind of you know people with their parents and everything all all, all cute and everything so this kid's there with his parents and what I'm noticing what what I notice immediately is that the 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 people who are sort of the you look at them and and you hear them and you go this might be one of those N people they are led to believe in the first three auditions that they have got something special and unique. They are so they not. Have no idea what that end means. The, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. That that Y and G and N thing. It's yeah. not something that like everybody's really talking about. Okay. It was something that you kind of if you kind of looked into it with the other people that were there, you'd kind of figure so you, yeah. figure figure out. I forget exactly. What, 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 yeah, whatever. The letter might not have been like an N, like for no yeah. or, or something. <laughs> it <laughs> might have been never. <laughs> Subtle symbol that was like that was clear. It was a know. letter that meant that you were the person that they were gonna basically say. No, th- what they, yeah. I can't remember. Ex- I, I I I can't remember exactly how I I know this was the case. The people that are kind of the silly people that they kind of put on through that that point. Yeah. They. They tell them along the way, like, "Hey, you got something yeah, interesting. You, you're unique. You're interesting. You, you, you've got something a little mm-hmm. interesting." So they're not telling them they suck. I must but, have. Um, I must <laughs> have been. I must have been in the presence of one of those auditions when one of the kind of silly people or whatever like got through and just I heard them that, that their their thing wasn't like, "Wow, great, awesome. Here's your here's your golden ticket." Wow. The way what they say, they kind of get their hopes up a little oh. bit, right? And, but don't you think those people also know what they're doing? Like people go. An audition, knowing that they're horrible, so they can get screen time, right? I would imagine that that is probably the case for something for in the some. neighborhood of like maybe twenty to maybe like at best maybe half of the people. I can Not guarantee you that this kid who went after me and another guy his name was Anthony he I, I, what I remember about that kid Anthony was like hearing him sing and he was like not not that good yeah. and out coming out of the third round. Bursting out of the door, got the golden ticket to go through to the celebrity judge round. He's like, "Yes!" <laughs> right. So it was in that moment when that guy got through that I was like, "Oh, this is oh, a this is no. sad, right?" Oh. Yo. So this kid, the kid that went after me with the jumpsuit and his and his, and his sweet, cute little parents, uh, uh, he made it to TV. So I later actually saw the saw the you know saw the the audition the 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 audition in front of the celebrity judges. <laughs> And, you know, they didn't, like, trash him to heck, but he was going in there expecting to have a shot, and he never had a shot. And as bad as... All right, so when you get bounced, you are obligated by what you have signed to do an exit interview. Yes. You have to go in and they ask you, oh, so, you know, what do you think went wrong? How'd you feel? And you go, oh, you know, get him, get him next time or whatever. Yeah. I'm sitting in line for that exit interview, and as bad as I might have felt in that moment... This kid with the jumpsuit and the gloves next to me and his little pair and, and, and his just, they, they, were, they, they were just, they were just sweet people. They were just nice, sweet people. And they were sitting there kind of a little just dejected with their heads down. There was palpable pain there. Aww. And I immediately, about whatever I was going through, I didn't feel that. I, I was like, I, you know, I had some kind of legitimacy to whatever it was I was doing. That was like, 
a memorably sad. I know this is supposed yeah. to be an embarrassing story about myself, no. but no, 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 <laughs> no, just I've been there. Man, that the reality TV thing can be a real brutal mistress. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's yeah. harsh. The, I've always known it's harsh, but I didn't know this. The most, the most yeah. memorable things about this experience are those giant Coke cups. Just like <laughs> they're like. They're like they're like extra extra large movie theater size, but like they're imposing. They're mm. and and just angled and choreographed, mm. and that and that kid and his parents sitting next to me, just palpably sad, and him having to go in so for that for that last back, little exit interview. Him? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, just just him and his two and his and his parents. They were just all kind of sitting there, just like. Ugh. Man, right? Like, like didn't see it, didn't see it coming. They just didn't see yeah. it, come, you know. I knew I was kind of rolling the dice. I guess that you know the way they, they that kid had like all these cameras and like attention and um, kind of excitement and everything about you know going on around him, mm-hmm. going in, mm-hmm. and they kind of hype him up. Uh, anyway, here's Wonderwall. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, and one more white guy with a guitar joke. So what, <laughs> so what was your your parents and ex-girlfriend were there as well? What yeah. was their reaction when yeah. you came busting out the room? It's like, I didn't get it. Yeah, no, the, yeah, that, that was, it's them three and Seacrest waiting for you on the other side of that door. Yeah. And I kind of, you know, and I come out, I don't know, I don't know the paper. I'm like, nah, and everyone, you know, it was... It was taken in stride. It was like yeah. a little bit sad and a little bit disappointing and everything. But I, I, I swear the Randy Jackson part totally took the sting out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Really? Yeah. 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 Because Keith Urban and Nicki Minaj, like their criticism being like, yeah, I just don't feel like you have like star power or whatever. It's like that felt kind of real. Mm-hmm. You know, it felt like a genuine kind of like, no, kind of criticism. And then for Randy to be like, that was terrible, that's dog. Right. At least he called me dog. That part was cool. Yeah. Dog, yeah. I guess. I guess. That's so another. Randy was the bad cop. Like, you know totally. How you Maybe he was. Totally. Feeling, he was feeling totally. Side of Mariah. Him. See. See. Mariah later. This was so redeeming. This was mm-hmm. so so nice. Later in like on you know Entertainment Weekly News or whatever it was at some at some point. Yeah. Uh, you know Mariah Carey after her Idol experience, she was like, "This was BS." Like the whole thing is like a stupid, crappy process, and it's not. She said that. J- she had oh, some. Yes. I am. I am. Wow. I am loosely paraphrasing. She was a little bit bitter about the idol experience mm-hmm. afterwards, and the fact that she thought I was cool, and she was looking at everybody else all confused that they weren't that at least one of them real. wasn't into it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She was like, she was like, what? Really? Oh man! I swear, every time I hear Mariah Carey song, I'm like, my no. God! Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. yeah, gosh. I mean, that's that, that is, that's that's incredible that. Even outside of the context of Vital, how cool is it that Mariah Carey thought you were like a good musician? Like that's just like and cu- no, and cute. Know you're cute. And cute. That's that's she wanted part. to go to a park and get drunk with me. That's, <laughs> Heck that's yeah, beautiful. That's I know. Really wonderful. I know. Yeah. I know. I got could have been. Could have been. I believe in it. There's still time. Mr. Eric yeah. Carey, that would never work. Eric it's the Carey. same. Oh, because ending. you're because you're taking her last name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> name? Can anybody name the movie that's from? Not a clue. Saving yeah. Silverman. <laughs> oh, oh my name in two weeks will be Mr. Darren Festbegler. And he goes, Oh, because you're taking her last name. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Story can I play a song? Yes, you can. Your eyes lit up with that. It's like he's a musician. It's, mean, it's meaningful. <laughs> I put I put out an album in December called Tangible Divide. And uh song ten is called it's a 10 track album last track is called um, why say goodbye my fate was calling me to test the scene so for me And so why say goodbye if you still want to try? Baby, give it time. It's not like tonight is our last shot to decide. Love's got no deadline. Together now we blaze. Takes us through the ages. We got the complications down. Let's bring it back to basics and 
so I say goodbye if you still wanna try. Baby, give it time. It's not like tonight is our last shot to decide. Love's got no deadline. Slice to precisely Might end up bloody But past the swamplands Still might get muddy Sometimes the sad times can help Any time that you put a little extra, I, that wasn't even the case here. That that's just kind of other other times in life. It's kind of it's 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 related. When you put a little bit of extra negativity out into the universe willfully, there's a strong likelihood that it will come back times five to kick yes. you, to, to to kick you in the button. And that is a lesson that I have like told to other people. But in the moment, sometimes when you're feeling self righteous about something or you're feeling like a victim. Um, you can act in a way that will surprise you later. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I've had multiple turns and multiple rounds of this kind of thing recently and what I've been going through. And um, it's kind of possible that last week I kind of might have stepped a little bit too far and I might have kind of sealed the deal and kind of, mm-hmm. you know, just, just kind of, mm, just kind of, I, I tried I haven't listened to a lyric to have run out of grace mm. um, and, and this was saying too much yeah mm. yeah 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 in good. this case it was a mo- it was a moment where I, I just there was something that came up and I put it in an accusatory way when I could have just put it in a hey look this X X, X might be Y you know X might equal Y X might, might, might equal Z I don't know I was like X equals Z like this you know yeah. mm-hmm. and that was a really really big mistake and mm. Um, to to come to terms with lessons like that, and um, to have other parts of life that surround it be you know things where you say to yourself like God, I want to do better in the future. I want to I want to do better in the future. Like the best thing you can do in a situation like that is just really you know it's it's to not beat yourself up for it, but to not let go of the lesson, and to make sure that the next time that you're facing the same scenario, that you don't screw yourself by. Uh, Saying too much or acting out of fear, saying something out of fear, saying something out of spite, you know? Yeah. And, 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 How are you with apologies? Good. Good. I don't, I don't, I don't have any bones about that. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not hesitant with apologies. Because that's and, actually a place that people tend to talk too much too. That was, that Instead was. Instead of just saying, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Two, Boom. two rounds ago, that was basically what I did. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Should have just said nothing. Mm. Should have. Yeah, that was the Mike Birbiglia. Everybody remember the Mike Birbiglia joke? What I should have said yeah, yeah, yeah. was nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you got a matter that's going on between two people, there are oh, it's this is this is an old trope. Just the idea that there's three sides of a story: yeah. one person, the other person, and the truth. The truth yeah. That was ba- what she. One of the parts of what she said in there is the over talking. It drowns out what the truth is, right? So maybe there were some corners and some turns of this, you know, topsy turvy breakup, blah blah blah, you know. This stuff where I actually kind of was the one that had a point, but if you drive it home too hard, or you know, that's not yeah. yeah but the only child thing, I'm I think that I'm I'm missing a couple of fundamentals of um, uh, like te- you know um, like I I, I really I, yeah mm, it's more it's it's like it's like group oriented yeah yeah like, yeah, like team teamworkish kinds of things where like 
it's it was the same thing with being like in a band where yeah. like I'm really open to it and I'm like really down to do it. But if it's like a song that I wrote and I'm like trying to teach it to other people, like the moment that I'm sort of giving somebody else instruction about mm-hmm. something and be like, ah, maybe you could do it this way, it becomes like a I kind of freeze and I'm not. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not utterly comfortable just sort of like being one of a group and, and just acting with, in the, in the interest of the group and not letting the the individual versus group, group dynamic come, come in and out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get that. I'm really bad at being a band. I'm really bad at being, and I'm not an only child. Maybe I'm just missing that anyway because I'm bad at it. But do, (laughs) do, do you feel that, you know, like on a personal level, just like. I had to teach myself to be uh, great at teamwork. And teamwork sounds like such a cliche. Like, mm-hmm. oh, teamwork makes the dream. No, just the Important. interpersonal. It, I think it comes down to everyone has their own, and this also sounds icky, agenda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everyone has their uh, own agenda. motives that are formed by their own experience. Sure. And you're not always going to win and you're not always going to be yeah. right yeah so when you're driving a point home sometimes the point doesn't even matter yeah yeah yep yeah 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 the the regrettable part I'm, I'm only a week out from this now so it's still fresh and i'm sorry that it's not perfect fodder for a normally comedic podcast <laughs> but the the like We're laughing at your pain. This, oh, please do please please <laughs> just some kind of brightness no um the the Small s Shakespeareanly disappointing and just oh, face palm mm-hmm. p- part of all this is that like four months went by and I and 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 I couldn't it was hard for me to suppress that like don't don't say anything just don't say anything and last weekend like today's Monday not yeah. this past weekend the weekend before I finally hit a place of peace with that and I and and it dawned on me that like my interests are correlated with time. She has had the last word here. She has said what she has had to say. Wipe my hands of it. Um, you know what? Whatever, whatever happens, happens. It's all you know. Everything, everything is gonna. It's gonna happen. It's gonna not happen. And like, I found a place of peace with that. And like, realizing the more time I let go by here, the better that will be for no matter what the next outcome is. And then it was literally the next day that a new issue had arisen where I, I just, I was certain of something that had gone down and. I don't regret reaching out to her about it. I regret the way that I put it. Yeah. And I, mm. I could have put it out there just like, look, maybe there's something going on. But I was like, yo, this is definitely what this was. Yeah. That, that you know, maybe we'll, maybe maybe I'll be back on the show in six months or something and yeah. tell you, oh, God, we patched pa- pa- it up, <laughs> work it out. She was, she was able to, uh, she was, <laughs> I love this stupid girl so God, gosh darn much. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, she's not stupid. She's Nice. Or it's kind of stupid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> In the same way that all boys and all girls and all everybody is stupid. Yep, and exactly. Do you feel like Disney movies failed you? Because I feel I blame yeah. a lot of this on Disney movies. There's always, oh, yeah. there's always convince the girl. You know, she may uh, not, uh, she may not see what it's what it really is right now. Your potential. Actually, you just yes. Convince her. You know, she'll she'll. Let me te- let me text her that. That's a good line. I'm just kidding. No, no. <laughs> is there a movie you're thinking of right now? Is there a- all of them. All of them. Even like a lot. As much as I love Aladdin and um, yeah, the live action movie. I'm not a prize to be movie. won, man. I'm not a prize to be won. Yeah, the more someone tries to con- like when in the context of relationships, like yeah. a common example too is even just getting into a relationship. And if someone, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to put it on one gender or the other. But if one person says, Guys. oh, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, if one person says, oh, I'm not ready, and the other person kind of pushes it... No, like, oh, no, no way! No, even, I've seen it so many times where, in the case where those people do get into a relationship, <clears throat> that person that wasn't ready is always... There's always something that's off there. Because yeah. they knew that they were convinced and they were talked into a relationship. Mm-hmm. And there's something in your gut, in your core, that's telling you that this isn't it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to have the, the, the cohesiveness and long-term potential of, of anything is going to be better if every if all parties are entering in as voluntarily and free-hearted as, 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 as possible. Yeah. No one is being coerced. No yeah. Yeah, 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 coerced. Uh, you, guys, you guys should have showed up for this podcast two weeks ago. You know? <laughs> no. let, me talk, let me talk through my problems and... 
could have prevented all this. Have you been writing it, things down as well? It really helps. Yeah. Uh, You're a songwriter. Uh, honestly, so, uh, you, know, you, you, you know what really helps? This is like an, a new take on an old thing. They yeah. used to say, mm-hmm. write a letter and put it in the drawer. I always do that. Right? Every breakup I, I have I, a letter. I, I do that with email drafts. Yep. yep. I do that with email drafts. That's scary. This was like my middle school thing. Back when like I always used email. Why is, that sc- why is that more scary than a letter? Because it's, it, it's in the cloud and it gets oh, yeah. released. Yeah, right. <laughs> if, yeah. It be- if it gets like, Bezos. Yeah. <laughs> I think I even heard this from like our rabbi at some point. Like if you if you're angry about something, Rabbi Brown, I'm pretty sure at some point. Like if you like uh, like regarding email, like if you have something you feel like you need to say, like you can put it in the drawer or you can put the draft away. You you, you get all the emotions out without the potential repercussions of hurting somebody. That has been yeah. that has been a helpful mechanism. So far, and mm-hmm. yet, st- I don't want to say it failed me. It was <laughs> no. It's not, nothing's gonna work 100 percent of the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You never know. Yeah, yeah. No, you're. Uh, it's funny. You guys hit me up this week and go, listen, think about some embarrassing regret, re- 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 <laughs> regretful, <laughs> regretful thing. And I sit here on my couch going, gee. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can think of... Yeah, there's, there's, there's one. one. <laughs> the thing I was thinking about anyway. Yeah. yeah no, if, it's... if it makes you feel any better, like, I still laugh about yeah. the fact that Janelle tagged me to help her with this podcast. <laughs> Likely because of my, my <laughs> defining current character trait, which is bad at game shows. So I totally, <laughs> so I totally understood. This song is called Amelia. and time surely help you see through the grime that blurred your sight made it hard to breathe save these thoughts for Amelia leave it all on the page it's one in a million Patience will be worth the pain So for now Clues you found Point a single way Soon you'll see the sunshine It's been on you the whole time So let go as it Lead you forward, save these thoughts for Amelia. Leave it all on the page. If it's one in a million, patience will be worth the pain. for real now Cause we both know what it's like Trying to take back what we've done Begging that I see you lie As a detail you forgot And there's nothing I can do When the words are coming through Where's a pin? Yeah Follow Eric on Instagram at evitoff and listen to Tangible Divide and all of Eric's music at ericvitoff.com or wherever you listen to your music. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps the word about the show spread like olive oil. 
<laughs> and of course, mm. make sure you're subscribed to easily download new episodes. I'm Trying is hosted, edited, produced, and scored by Janelle Dennis and me, Jacob Derwin. Our cover art was created by the fabulous Sammy Kappa. See more of her work at SammyKappa.com. That's S-A-M-I-C-A-P-P-A.com. And you can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at I'm Trying Show. And if you want... You can also follow us individually at Janelle Dennis and at Jacob Derwin. If you've screwed up or embarrassed yourself and are looking for help... Or pity. Reach out to us on Twitter or email at imtryingshow at gmail.com and our team of crisis experts... It's us. ...will be more than happy to assist you. Reasonably happy. Thank you so much for listening and in the words of Mariah Carey... Not Taylor Swift. Gotta do, do what's best, best for me, baby. baby. And, and that, that means, means I gotta, gotta shake it off. off.